Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, it's time for the May edition of the overall tier list. You know, I love making this video each month. I, I just gonna tell you right now, and you've probably already seen it from the uh, the time on the description. This one's not gonna take as long. I feel like the list is in a great spot. We've had 8.2 come out. A lot of the champions we thought would be good. Guess what? They were good. Uh, we do have some promotions, some champions we're gonna talk about. We have the new champions, of course, and then the buff champions. As always, I always say this, you can see this is our 32nd edition. I believe we've been saying this since number one. We've been refined it a little bit, but rank up the champions that you enjoy playing for a variety of reasons. One, first and foremost, is this is a game. It should be fun. Playing and ranking the champions you enjoy is fun. But also, even if you just want to be like super pragmatic about it, you also are more likely to invest in, to spend time on, to really learn how to play, especially for those tough fights, the champions you enjoy. So let's say you really want to use Sorcerer Supreme. You love Sorcerer Supreme. Well, I might have Wiccan higher on the list, but if you, unless you just desperately needed neutralized for that, you're probably going to be better with Sorcerer Supreme if you spent more time on Sorcerer Supreme and you don't like Wiccan. Therefore, you should rank up Sorcerer Supreme unless you really need that neutralized. We'll go through this. We'll talk about it. Uh, but then the other thing is, there's the legend. This playlist or this spreadsheet is linked in the description. You can check that out and you can read the description, uh, the legend. I know some of you will comment and be like, hey, your face cam is in the way. We can't read the legend. Just watch a little bit more of the video. You'll see it does move and we'll go over the legend. Uh, but I don't want to take your time now reading it to you. You could also open up the spreadsheet and you'll see that right there. There will be a um, a screenshot size edition of the spreadsheet that I will be putting up on Twitter. Thank you to Misty K for making those for me. You've been doing a phenomenal job as, as well as uh, channel member Adam. So I appreciate that. And then last but not least, I'd really love it. You go and you check it out. You see the channels listed on the right hand side of this there. BMG makes his own overall tier list. It's phenomenal. DLL with his essential war attackers. Nerd, he hasn't updated them in a little bit, but great uh, videos on BGs, things like that. And then the whole Illuminati, Tom Jarvis, Campo, Nahorn, Bittersteel, MP Plays, Bryce, Emulates, and PWF. Go give them a, some support, give them a subscribe, watch some of their videos. These are who I run my tier list by. I show it to them each month. They give me all of their feedback. We typically have some sort of discussion on how we're feeling about it. So that's not just my ideas. Yes, ultimately I end up making the decision, but I listen to their feedback. I listen to their experiences. This game is so big and so complex. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into the rankings. I'm going to start off with our first one there. Now, the one thing I will tell you about the legend, if the microphone's there, that means we're going to talk briefly about them. Uh, I do have it next to Absorbing Man. The only thing I'm really, truly going to point out is that he was an absolute MVP for so many people on 8.2. So Battlegrounds, War, Questing. Sure you can even use him for AQ and Incursions if you want to. But the big ones, there he is. He's been an absolute beast. The only champion who I think maybe we could see some sort of promotion, and I do want your feedback on this one for sure, is Longshot. Now, he's grown on me tremendously. I think it might be Battlegrounds that is really emphasizing him, showing how powerful he can be. He's a very difficult defender, unless you have just the absolute ideal counter and attacker for him. And then he's just been powerful for a lot of Battlegrounds. That's why so many of the Mystic Champions are so powerful. Mystic Dispersions, buff is in, buffs are in, involved. Let me know what you think. I think he's pretty good there in that super premium tier, which is like, if you come to me and ask me, Vega, should I rank up Longshot? My reaction is yes, I'm excited about it. Not a lot of hesitation. That's how you end up in that tier. So I would love your feedback. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the mutant list. We have no changes in the tier above all, which is just absolutely the best. We have no changes in the top shelf, which is like, again, that question, should I rank up this champion? It's like, heck yeah, like we're excited about it. That's how you end up there. And then we end up in our in our first changes here, champions we're gonna talk about in super premium. The one I wanna ask you about is Sunspot. Now his availability is a seven star. And again, the prominence of Battlegrounds, I think is maybe, maybe I, that's what I'm gonna ask you. Is that making us aware or remind us of how good he is? Because it's been a while since he was at the top of the game. Or is it that he just happens to be very good in Battlegrounds, doing so much damage? Seven stars appear like their own separate species, right? Uh, this is like when cavemen and Homo sapiens were on the Earth at the same time together. And it was like, these are, these are two different breeds. These are different things. One of them is clearly going to completely replace the other one. 
I, that's what I'm wondering too, is if it's just that the seven stars are so powerful. So it's kind of like almost overemphasizing or overstating how powerful he is. That being said, I would like your feedback on that. He's one that I am interested in. So many debuffs and then also how big that SB2 can get. Uh, Iceman, Iceman was buffed. Now, you know, my hopes and dreams was that Iceman was gonna have a mechanic similar to like maybe Bishop or Storm X, where he's punishing champions for shrugging his uh, his debuffs, the ice stuff that he does, right? He didn't end up with that, but they did make his signature ability and his kit work extremely well together. The damage is very good. You get him to that high sig, and I think you get up to it's a hundred percent chance on all crits to apply more of his frost bites or what have you, whatever they're called. Uh, and then you can use the SB1s, which is a really nice evade counter and things like that. He's incredibly tanky with the ice armor. You can utilize that to get some nice damage off the SB2. You build things up with the SB1. You can detonate them with the heavy. And then of course the man has so many immunities and they even finally added Nova Flame, which I do really like. I'd like to see a Mystic or two, maybe some of the ones that are on fire get it. But I think Iceman, fits very, very well right there. Now, if you want to synergize him up with Scorpion, I think you're going to see some really nice, big additional burst to his damage and potentially he could move up a little bit. This is new. Let's see how much he gets used. I know that he is a problematic defender now on defense because that initial uh, damage is there, especially if you have him at the high SIG, that's causing damage. But this is an overall tier list for questing and general rank ups. I do a Battlegrounds tier list. We just recently got that out and that is reflected there. I feel very comfortable with this rank for him. He's a part of some nice energy teams as a lot of the mutants are. Uh, what is it? Triple, quadruple immunities for him uh, as well. If you want to run recoil, you can. I think that does hurt a little bit about that cycling, those SB1s though, because he doesn't have a heal. So he's going to be taking the damage from recoil itself. Uh, but you could probably get a significant amount of damage in. And then, like I said, handling evade is never, ever, ever a bad thing. And that's just refreshable off the SB1. I really like the buff. I'm happy with this placement. Keep in mind, super premium is like, you want to take him to rank five? You want to take him to rank four? Absolutely. Have fun. You got my blessing. Uh, go forth and have a good time with your favorite champions. Moving on to the science tier, no changes in the tier above all. Uh, you know, I don't think that's uh, overly surprising to anyone. Moving on to the top shelf, I see a lot of people really enjoying Cassie Lang. I see it on Twitter and, and on YouTube. I'm really excited to see that. I pulled her early. I really love her. I did get that video out on her. Uh, she does have some whiffs, which I don't love, and hopefully those graphics get fixed so that can't uh, stop happening because it's pretty frustrating. I do see the value in Spot, and I know some of you are going to say, like, why isn't Spot higher? A lot of that for me is due to, I do think his play style over a longer fight can start to lead to errors and mistakes. Now, if you really have him down, I guess potentially you could move him up a little bit more, but I, I'd like to hear back on that. And I'm not talking about Battlegrounds. I see it in Battlegrounds. That's why I have a separate Battlegrounds tier list in video, because that is a different thing. It's a different mode of play. I think we take more chances and that sort of stuff. He's in the top there. I don't, to me, he's not up there with Scorpion, Quicksilver, and Human Torch. And I love Spot, I do. I think he creates openings with his miss mechanic. He has obviously access to tremendous damage. Well, I think the only champion that's immune to rupture in the whole game is Scorpion. Uh, so I get it, I see it. But as far as giving advice for people for going questing, rank ups, that sort of thing, I think he's really well suited in that top shelf category. Titania, you're gonna start seeing some Titania stuff out of me. Uh, I love that champion. I love, love, love that champion. And I'm having an absolute blast with her, but I think I also kind of like Spot. I need to keep this in mind. I need to keep that in mind that this is about giving advice for the rank ups and those sorts of things. I think being in the top shelf is tremendous. I do not currently see her or Spot being as powerful or being able to do as much as Scorpion, Quicksilver, and Human Torch. Would love your, uh, your feedback on that. And there's no other changes in Super Premium as far as science is concerned. Let's go ahead and move to Tech. And we have our first big promotion of the uh, of May's edition here, and that is going to be future Ant-Man or Zane or Phantom Man, as I like to call him. Okay, B McGee's been telling us this whole time for a very long time. I think there's something about future Ant-Man, and I think part of it is, to me, so much of it felt like you needed to, to have cooperation from the AI, right? One of the ideas behind him is that the AI, the defender, could potentially never throw a special. Now, that doesn't, 
come into play in, in places where they have like a passive power game. We're talking about combat power rate, but that's a lot of places in the game, right? We're not always trying to deal with someone who's power gain. We're not always dealing with Hyperion, essentially. Also, and I talked to B about this and talked to Bitter Steel about it, two of the biggest Ant-Man uh, fans out there. And they both said like, yeah, sometimes the defender will throw a special. The idea, the idea isn't necessarily that if the defender throws a special, you've now lost the fight. It's just that you can often keep them from ever throwing a special and you're doing significant damage. And one of the things that was pointed out by TJ was like, almost no one is immune to his disintegration damage, I believe it's called. He's fantastic, he's awesome. He alone may get me to continue opening the six star featured, even though I am full sail into the seven stars. Potentially future Ant-Man gets it moved all the way to the tier above all. I'd like to see more. I wanna make sure it's not just war, but if he's powerful in war and he's powerful in battlegrounds and he's usable in questing content, that might be enough to get him moved up or is it gonna be more like Spot and Titanic just talked about where Battlegrounds is amazing, War is amazing. I get it, I love it, that's great. But if we're talking about questing, maybe he's not quite as powerful. And then some of you are gonna be like, why are you holding on to Mega Sandal? I used her so much in 8.2. Her heal block and way of dealing with mutants was so incredibly powerful. I, maybe I will get the video out one day, it's just time is a limited resource for me. Her ability to just go to her SP3, get all of those incinerates or plasma off of that and just keep them refreshed. She's doing so much damage and she's incredibly safe to play that way. I loved using her in 8.2. The other champion we're going to talk about uh, in tech is um, is Shocker and Super Premium. So as much as I've said that I'm like kind of swearing off six stars and that's said with a little bit of, you know, take that with a grain of salt because I'm not, is I pulled Shocker, played him a little bit and I immediately took him to rank four. I also awakened him and took him to SIG 200. I'll probably get some videos out on him as well at some point. I love playing him. And right now I'm at that stage with Shocker where it's difficult for me to separate how much I enjoy playing him with how good he is on a tier list. Okay, let's put it that way. I think right now we have him very appropriately ranked. I do not see him going anywhere below that. He does have the nice immunities to Shock. And I think that's to Concussion debuffs itself. Uh, I did use him to take out a Mr. Sinister right with that. But it's not just Mr. Sinister, that could be a node or other things too. And then uh, MSD has done tremendous uh, videos showing that you don't have to just build up to this SP, the one SP2 and then land this massive heavy. If you need, you can go to that SP3. I think he gets like an Energize or something like that. And you can just keep cycling those SP1s using the stuns that come through just playing him and the SP1. And you can land your heavies and do tremendous, tremendous damage that way. So there's a lot of the, uh, versatility in what initially appears to be a, a semi-simple kit, let's put it that way, or let's say maybe he appears like he might be limited, but he 100% is not. There's a lot of nuance in there. I absolutely love Shocker and could definitely see him moving into that top shelf category over like a Penny Parker, Hulkbuster, or Mysterio. I really like Shocker, in case it's not clear. Give me a little feedback where you've been using him. If you think he should be promoted, let me know where you're using him, how you're using him. Uh, and your reasons for it, and we'll definitely take that into consideration. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the skill class. Move on to skill. We have we have no changes in the tier above all. We have no changes in the uh, well, no promotions into the top shelf. And this one hurts a little bit. This one hurts a little bit. If you you know if you've been watching these videos for a while, you got to go way back. I mean, I'm talking like myself and DLL, and uh, you know, so many people put a lot of time into these into these tier lists, especially in the beginning when we were just setting it all up. And we had Killmonger very high. Killmonger was in the, the second tier, I believe. And we believed it, and it was true. I mean, we've been doing this for 32 months now, right? That's a long time. And we talked about it, I brought it up. There's some comments that had been made recently, with, especially with Killmonger being available as a seven star. And a lot of us were like, I feel like I should be excited and I'm not. And so we kind of examined why. And the game is moving past him, right? I think with a nice little tune-up, maybe if his bleeds were stackable or something like that. But what he really does, is he's a great defender. He's still a very good defender, especially getting him at that high SIG level, but he needs to punish those specials and he gets up his true strike. Unfortunately, right now, it doesn't feel like the game is asking us to have true strike. At least that's not a big pain point. If it becomes one again, maybe he goes up. But it feels like the skill class is being asked to shrug things, cleanse things. And he's not really doing that. I know he's got a synergy, I understand. 
and I want to reiterate too, it's not like Super Premium is a bad rank. This is great. This is phenomenal. I mean, look at the champions that are in there. But I did need to reflect it. I think this is where he belongs. If the game, if the meta changes or he gets a tune-up, we'll reflect that. Uh, I'm a little bit sad. I'm genuinely kind of sad about this because uh, it was something that we really hung on strong to and told people like, no, this is how good Killmonger is. Here's the visual evidence. And a lot of people came around. They're like, yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh, but there we are. Let's see Mantis's buff go live. But I, if it if it's as good as it looks like it's going to be, she'll end up in the top shelf. Moon Dragon, uh, the first new champion that we're covering this month. She is bewildering me a little bit. Now, I recognize that she was going to be powerful in some scenarios, in some situations. And the way she deals with some of those debuffs, I think is really unique to skill. And anytime I see something unique in a class, especially with the ability to also do damage on top of being unique, that opens my eyes a little bit, right? You realize that that ceiling that they could potentially reach is quite high. Now, she does not appear to me currently to be tier above all, but I felt great with her in this super premium. Then I saw the videos that Nagase has been making. I will link Nagase's channel in the description of this video. Because if you're like, hey, I've pulled Moon Dragon, or I really like New Dragon, but I'm not familiar with Nagase's channel, what are you talking about? You need to go watch these videos. And um, they are borderline bonkers. No, they are. Some of them are genuinely mind-blowingly bonkers. The amount of damage that she is pumping out. Now he has taken his to rank five, but one of the things that's happening for me is that it's not the niche or the specialized thing that I thought she was going to be great in. These appear to be outside of that special or unique or niche scenario. I think we're going to need to let some time go by. Make sure that's what she was intended to do. And also that it's not that maybe these are some unique scenarios where it's just accentuating her damage and things like that. But I think there's a chance we have another Zemo on our hands. Remember when we first saw Zemo, we're like, very cool, but he's gonna need a lot of these debuffs to come on, but it can't be too many debuffs. He's gonna take some time. And then we're like, oh, wait a minute. We started playing him. All these interactions, very cleverly designed by his designer, where there's all these interactions with nodes, defenders, and things like that, that are allowing you to get your root up more frequently. Also, shrugs. Uh, and then he comes in with this massive heavy. So I'm curious if Moon Dragon's gonna be more like that, where Nagasi's just caught onto it quickly, and then over time, two, three months, we see her at the top of the top shelf or something like that. Based on what he's showing, I do think that's possible. I wanna be a little conservative with this on this one though, and we'll move her up if that's where ultimately she should be. And then we'll talk about the last new champion for the month, which is Adam Warlock. I mean, <laughs> uh, there's, re there's really not much more to say to it. In fact, I'll, I'll say the negative. That's what I'll do. I think there's a reason why all the content creators who are covering Adam Warlock are saying to you, look, remember, his rebalancing period has just started. Three months worth of data. Keep that in mind. He could get rebalanced. And that's because he does just seems so outrageously strong. People are doing things with their five stars. You can go unblockable. All the things are true and accurate. Here's what I'll say. Here's the quote unquote negative. One, potential rebalancing period. Two, is when I see that included now, and I feel like this is not the first time we're seeing this, where it's like these immunities are only for uh, against other champions, okay? Is I feel like that might be a bit of a safeguard, a bit of a like governor that's been put on by Kabam. Very smart, I think. Where if they see something is a little too much, they can do it via nodes, right? They can challenge him via nodes. There's gonna be nodes he just won't be able to take or those immunities won't come into play. They won't trigger because he's immune to the defender, to the other champion, not to the node itself. This is very different than what we're seeing with Hercules and why I don't have him up there with Hercules, but I recognize how powerful he currently is. And in this state, if played aggressively, so there's a bit of a high skill there, that's why the, uh, the joystick is there. I'm Warlock. I, I feel very, it doesn't feel ridiculous to just have him in the tier above all up there with Cosmic Ghost Rider, Gallon Hulkling, and also Hercules. As usual, let me know what you think we got right. Let me know what you think we got wrong. Remember, this game is way too complex for one champion to always be better than another. Rank up who you enjoy. Have fun. 
make sure you watch this video. And then if you pull that champion, you're like, how good's Gore? You check this out and then you go, you play him, you watch some videos on him, you decide if you like him. If you do, then you rake him up. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.